Thank you to you both. Is that a long enough pause? Okay, I, I, I want to continue on that. I know that you have a response to what, to what you just heard. <laughs> Uh, I mean, yes, I, I, you know, I, I do know that um, in, in this country we do live, b believe in the, in the Supreme Court to you know, affirm what is the law of our country. Um, and I also understand that Dr. Jeffress has his religious beliefs, as I have my religious beliefs. And your religious beliefs don't trump my religious beliefs. And my religious beliefs uh, believe that all people are made in the divine image of a wonderful, loving, gracious God, and that love between two people, whether it be between two people of the same gender or two people of the opposite gender, should be affirmed and valued and lifted up in our civil, civil society. And religiously, I don't believe that there is anything in the Bible that that condemns homosexuality or homosexual relationships in the way we view them today. Um, you know, we have evolved, uh, as Barack Obama has done, and so many, we've evolved as a society about what love is and how that manifests itself. You know, I'd be interested to know, Dr. Thomas, and by the way, welcome to Dallas. Uh, I'd be interested to know your perspective on religious freedom. For example, should those bakers in Oregon who had the Sweet Cakes uh, Bakery and refused to bake a cake for a lesbian wedding, do you think the government was right to sanction them? Should they be put out of business like they are because they will not violate their religious conscience and serve a same-sex marriage ceremony? Do you think they ought to be fined by the government or was the government wrong? Dr. Jeffers, do you believe that those who opposed slavery and those who opposed uh, interracial marriage should not have had the law protect them and to ensure that both black and white people were able to drink out of the same fountain? So I take it your answer is yes, they should have their business taken away from them because they won't bake a, a wedding cake for a gay ceremony. Is that true? I didn't ask that, Dr. Jeffers. No. I asked you what your... Uh, so <laughs> but you, you won't answer the question, question, will you? Would, you won't answer my question. I do not believe race is the same as sexual choice. I have an African-American pastor friend here in this community who says, don't equate sin with the color of my skin. And I believe many people of color, not all, but many, take offense that you equate sexual choices with skin color. And that's very offensive to many well, people. I, it's very offensive to me that you would equate my, my sexual orientation as a sexual choice. Yes. My sexual orientation is just as valid in my lifestyle as someone's color of their skin. It is not a choice. It is something that is a God-given well, gift. A pastor, and I not demonize pastor, people. Pastor, all sexual activity is a choice. All sexual activity. Nobody puts a gun to your head or my head and makes us do anything sexually. It is all a choice. If you're talking about inclination, that's another story. But I think it's interesting. You didn't answer the question of whether or not that baker ought to have his business taken away because his religious belief of 2,000 years in this country says marriage should be between a man and a woman. And John, that's where I'm afraid we're going here. Uh, those who cry for tolerance are going to be the most intolerant of people like us to retain our beliefs without threat of civil litigation or even governmental sanctions. And Dr. Jeffers, we've not been in this country for 2,000 years. So, you know, to say that we... But Christianity religious, has been here for 2,000 years. And Christianity continues to evolve uh, during, through, through our understanding and through our tradition. God's Word never evolves. It never changes. The Scripture says, Thy Word is settled in heaven forever, O Lord. People change, opinions change, but God's Word never changes. Well, I believe that God... <laughs> God is still speaking, and God continues to reveal God's good news through living beings. Just but like God's not schizophrenic. He doesn't contradict himself. I'm not God <laughs>God has already spoken. His revelation is in Scripture. And unless you're willing to say Jesus was a homophobe, how do you say in Matthew 19, he says, God created people male and female. A man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. That is God's pattern for marriage. It's been the pattern for 2,000 years for Christianity, thousands more of years for Judaism. That's the historic understanding of the Bible. There's no ambiguity about it at all. Biblical marriage in Judaism was not about a man and a woman for the sake of love. It was about the sake of 
property. It was about women's do men's domination over women. We've evolved on marriage. No, we it, it was marriage. it was God's created plan. It wasn't about the domination of women. God's eternal plan was for one man and one woman. God designed marriage, and I think He knows how it best operates. Who are we to say we know better than God? So what are we saying, Dr. Jeffers, that we should continue slavery because slavery was in the Bible? The slavery was never condoned in the Bible. Ever has it been condoned in the Bible? And by the way, those who led the fight against slavery were Christians. The abolitionists were Christians who led the fight against slavery. So no, the Bible does not condone slavery. And to equate uh, gay marriage with you know the freedom from slavery is a complete twisting of Scripture. Well, I respect your opinion. I don't agree. <laughs>